Hello and welcome to the in new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment we are going to talk about the health impacts of pollution due to mining on the tribals in Chhattisgarh. So this topic is important from the perspective of prelims as well as GS mains papers. Let's begin with the topics of discussion step by step. First of all we will talk about why news. We will also talk about the study which was conducted. We will talk about the impacts of unregulated as well as excessive mining and we will talk about national mineral policy of 2019 mining activities in Chhattisgarh also about its mineral resources we will talk about pradhan mantri khanij kshetra kalyan yojana we will also talk about the national institute of research in tribal health we will talk about the challenges as well as the way forward related to mining activities and in the midst of the segment i am going to ask you a prelim space question for which if you know the answer you can comment in the common box so why in news because mining operations which are prevalent in chatisgarh have put the tribes of raigar district as at an increased risk of acute respiratory infection this study was commissioned by the union environment ministry and it was conducted by the national institute of research of tribal health which is an icmr body icmr is a pre independence body which goes back to 1911 and it works under the aegis of ministry of health and family welfare so let's talk about the district raigar district of chatisgarh which is the easternmost district of chatisgarh in the comment segment please tell me how many states are there with which chatisgarh shares its borders so chatisgarh has this raigar district which is popular for dhokra casting as well as bell metal casting bell metal casting and the kilo river or kelo river flows through it also it is famous for the silk such as mulberry silk as well as tussar silk so let's move forward and talk about the study which was conducted the study says that mining activities have put the tribal population of raigar at an increased risk of acute respiratory infection tuberculosis and road traffic accidents apart from the health environmental health hazards there is a lot of undernutrition prevalent which may increase the risk further for various other diseases acute respiratory infection was detective detected in 1 by 5th of the population which was much higher than the entire chatisgarh which was conducted by the survey was conducted by national health and family survey which found out that such a problem was prevalent in only 2.2% of chatisgarh as a whole and tribes had it much higher also however in depth studies need to be conducted in order to weed out other causes of concern other medical conditions which existed there were about 1733 adults as well as children from 33 villages of tannar block were clinically diagnosed for general morbidity and nutritional deficiency disorder which were me measured because of their pulse blood pressure blood sugar weight and health also about 42% of preschool children were underweight and 8.8% men and 6.6% women were having grade 3 chronic energy deficiency and after ari the most common medical condition that existed there was fever as well as scabies which is an itchy skin condition by sarcoptes scabies all right it's a basically a burrowing mite which bites the people and then scabies happen a fifth of the adult population was hypertensive as well as anemia also was prevalent is prevalent and fungal infection were also be found to be there at 4% of those who were surveyed now let's talk about the impacts of excessive and unregulated mining so the out of the total geographical area of india 0.14% are there for mining this particular area is there for mining and only 20% is actually mined the indian subsoils are rich in onshore as well as offshore crude oil oil and gas uh, coal iron ore copper as well as bauxite and if we talk about the constitutional status of mining 
so there is a entry there is an entry serial number 23 in the state list which state which states that whatever minerals are there in the geographical boundary of a state belongs to the state government now unregulated mining has the potential to release harmful substances in the environment if we talk about air surface mines may produce dust from blasting operations as well as hauling off roads and some mines also release methane which is a greenhouse gas and it may give rise to greenhouse effect smelter operations with insufficient safeguards in place have the potential to pollute the air with heavy metals sulfur dioxide as well as other pollutants if we talk about smelting smelting is basically to introduce heat to the ore of a metal so that the base metal is extracted if we talk about water the mining sector uses a large amount of water and they may reuse it but some mines after using water mining throws sulfide containing minerals into the air and when they are mixed with water they can give rise to sulfuric acid which is corrosive in nature and causes skin diseases land of course it strips off the soil and causes a lot of harm to the flora fauna of the place which is mined now if we talk about health and safety underground as well as surface mining both are very hazardous but underground mining is much more hazardous because of poorer ventilation as well as visibility and it may give rise to many respiratory disorders as well look at this map you will find out that chatisgarh is rich in both major coal as well as major iron deposits and if we talk about non metal minerals chatisgarh has the ores of basically bauxite dolomite as well as limestone you have to look at this map and find out where chatisgarh is and please see the different non metallic minerals then you can see what i am talking about now let's move on and find out what is national mineral policy 2019 which was replaced by the national mineral policy of 2008 for which a committee was formed in the year 2017 under dr k rajeshwar rao after his recommendations only the particular policy came into being so it has a very sim simple objective what that to enhance transparency as well as efficiency and better regulation should be there as well as its enforcement for development social as well as economic of the people and the environment now before going towards the details of the national mineral policy i would like to make you understand some important terms such as so right of first refusal this is reconnaissance permit then comes prospecting license then comes mining lease these are nothing but licenses reconnaissance permit is there to basically survey the entire area so uh, putting the area under surveillance to find out which locations to be explored then the second stage is prospecting license to see what areas can be mined and then comes last the actual mining lease getting the license and starting with the mining so these terms are reconnaissance permit prospecting license and mining lease then comes right of first refusal right of first refusal is a clause in a contract in which i am going to understand uh, i am going to make you understand with the help of an example please look at it and the example includes three people x y and z X and Y have entered into a contract for a property. Say this is a car, supposedly. So, before going to Z directly for offering Z to purchase this particular property, X will have to first go to Y. Now, Y has the right of first refusal. When Y refuses, then only X can offer that property for sale to Z. This is known as right of first refusal. So, the details of the national mineral policy are such. that it introduces the right of first refusal for reconnaissance permit and prospecting license holders 
it also encourages the private sector to take up exploration so that it may give rise to job creation in the private sector. There is also encouragement of merger as well as acquisition of mineral entities and transfer of mining leases and creation of dedicated mineral corridors to help the private sector. And the 19, 2019 policy proposes to grant status of industry to the mining sector in order to enhance financing for mining for private sectors and for acquisition of mineral assets in different other countries by private sectors. Also the policy mentions rationalization of reserved areas which were given to PSUs which were not used for auctions so that private sector can also take its advantages. The policy also mentions to make efforts to harmonize taxes, levies as well as royalties and bring them at par with the international benchmarks for helping the private sectors. Now let's talk about mining activities in Chhattisgarh, basically the mineral resources of Chhattisgarh we are going to discuss here. So Chhattisgarh is the highest coal producer and it is second in iron ore production. You have to tell me in the comment segment which is the highest, which is the first in iron ore production. And only it is the only tin producing state in India. Also, major limestones, dolomite and bauxite are the different non-metallic minerals which are found in Chhattisgarh. Now let's move forward and talk about Pradhan Mantri Khanit Kshetra Kalyan Yojana, which was launched in the year 2015. To minimize and mitigate the adverse impacts of mining during the mining as well as after the mining on the environment, health and socio-economic conditions of the people that are residing there. It is implemented by the district mineral foundations of the respective districts which are affected by mining. District Mineral Foundation is a trust which has been set up under Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Amendment Act of 2015 as a non-profit body in the districts which are affected by mining. 60% of the funds will be utilized for high priority sectors such as drinking water supply, sanitation and health, education, skill development, women and child care and to take care of the elderly and the disabled. And who contributes in this fund? Miners contribute in the fund. The miners who have acquired the mining lease prior to January 2015, 12 January 2015, this is the cutoff date of the amendment, will have to give 30% of the royalty to the fund. And miners who have acquired the mining lease after this date will have to give 10% of royalty to the fund. Royalty is basically the fees which the miners give to the government in proportion to the minerals extracted. Alright, so let's move towards before that 40% of the fund will be utilized for fiscal infrastructure, irrigation, energy and the rest. Now let's move towards the National Institute of Research in Tribal Health. This body comes under ICMR and this, this was renamed as National Institute of Research in Tribal Health in the year 2014. Prior to that it was known as Regional Medical Research Center for Tribals. What does this body do? It looks after the well-being of the tribal population. It conducts studies in the field of their health and also coordinates with the government to promote policies and promote framework which are good for their well-being. Now let's move towards and talk about the challenges. Challenges are divided into three categories here. First is the displacement and rehabilitation issue. Because of mining, lots of tribal people have been displaced and they have not been rehabilitated properly. And this gives rise to non, they lose the trust in the government machinery and the law and order situation in the country, which gives rise to left-wing extremism such as Naxalism in resource-rich resource areas such as Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and Odisha. There are environmental and health issues which are also related. So, environmental pollution has been caused by Makrana marble in Rajasthan, the granite mining of Karnataka which has left a huge hole in the earth. Also, Damodar Valley has been severely polluted due to mining activities, loss of biodiversity, and local heritage is also a very serious cause 
and the prevalence of mining in any area causes various respiratory disease like acute respiratory uh, infection as well as fibrosis and silicosis. There are administrative issues which are also lying with the mining sector that arbitrary allocation of coal mines leads to the long litigation process and eventually cancellation of allocation and charges of corruption are also seen. Also, delay in environmental clearances are there due to bureaucratic hindrances and red tapism. Judicial interventions lead to long delay and also losses to the investor. Supreme Court has intervened in many of the instances and put heavy penalty on illegal mining without green clearances in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka and Orisha in the year 2017, banning of Vedanta Group in Niamgiri Hills of Orissa and also shutting down of 88 illegal mines in Goa. Let's talk about way forward. There is a need for an expedition of the clearing process for the judicious use of mineral resources because minerals are not that ab are abundant and also they are non-renewable source of energy. Stringent implementation of mining related issues should be there and the ban, proper ban on unscientific mining process such as rat hole mining should also be robustly implemented. R rat hole mining was banned in the year 2014 but they are still prevalent in many areas such as the East Jantia Hill area of Meghalaya. Ensure transparency in block allocation and rule based order should be followed. Use of technology for a better way of extracting the minerals so that it is sustainable and causes the least harm to the environment. And proper rehabilitation of the displaced tribes and people should be there and the tribal way of life and culture should be respected. Proper environmental impact assessment as well as social impact assessment should also be conducted and utilization of district, district mineral fund to construct physical and social infrastructure should be robustly and seriously implemented. So all is not grim, government has taken certain steps but these should be taken in a long run. So I hope you found this segment informative, tomorrow I am going to turn up with another segment, thank you so much for watching.